Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Dayton Lamb. He says, the Kingsman Secret Service Exe Loadout. The Scar H, no attachments, but flat snow camo. The compact 45 USP gadget one nothing, gadget two nothing, M67 frag grenade. Hope you enjoy this loadout level cap and remember manners make it the man. Don't forget this rule or you will be smashed in the head with a beer glass. Oh and if you do this for Battlefield Hardline just convert this over to whatever you would like. So here we are using the Scar H with a spray snow camo. Unfortunately they didn't have that flat white camo in Battlefield Hardline. Maybe we can remedy this once the decal system comes out for the guns. Now I haven't seen Kingsman yet but the trailer looks awesome and who can say no to a movie with a white Scar L in it. The movie did have the Scar L, not the Scar H, but unfortunately we haven't had a Scar L in a Battlefield game since Battlefield 3. Now in order to run the Scar H in Battlefield Hardline, I had to play as the Enforcer class. Uh, this class normally runs with the Ammo Pack, C4, Riot Shields, those types of gadgets. Now since Battlefield 4, the Scar H has changed up pretty drastically. If you're used to how it plays in BF4, uh, it's going to take a bit getting used to when you switch over to this game. The first thing you'll notice is the recoil is off the charts compared to the old one. It has about twice as much vertical recoil equal in Hardline than it did in Battlefield 4, so that's going to be difficult getting used to, however it does significantly more damage per shot. Battlefield 4 did 33 damage maximum, which means you still needed 4 shots to kill somebody. In Battlefield Hardline it does 43 damage per shot, which means you only need 3 shots to kill somebody, and if they've had a little bit of damage done to them, 14 damage or more you will kill them in two shots. So the simplest way to put it is that the Scar H damage has been increased significantly since Battlefield 4, but so has the recoil. So you're going to need to throw some attachments on there to try and compensate for it. And running with the naked Scar H was really difficult. Not only are the iron sights tricky to use, but combining those iron sights with just over the top recoil makes it almost impossible. This gun is something that you have to modify. And if you're going to put one attachment on this weapon, it is the compensator. No longer is the muzzle break the ultimate way to reduce that vertical recoil. That job now relies on the compensator and that's actually going to almost cut your vertical recoil in half making it perform similarly to the Scar H from Battlefield 4. This is definitely something you need to do just to even begin getting good with this weapon. Otherwise it's just too hard to control at longer ranges and if you can't control the weapon then you're simply just not going to be able to reap the benefits of its extremely high damage per shot. Beyond that the underbarrel attachment is really up to you. An angled grip can give you a couple really accurate shots before you start to spray out a little bit more. Stubby grip will control your fire in full auto mode and the vertical grip will help you out if you're moving around and shooting. Now as you can see here I have started adding attachments onto the Scar H. I know it kind of violates the rules of loadout here but this is the first time using the Scar H in Battlefield Hardline. I was hoping it would be a worthwhile weapon and we could maybe learn something from it and all I learned is that the Scar H naked is a terrible weapon. Once you start putting some attachments on there it actually becomes usable. Now it's cool about the hardline unlock system is that you really only need to get about a hundred kills per gun to get whatever attachments you want for that weapon. It is going to cost you some in-game cash after you get those hundred kills but you're going to be able to pick the exact attachments that you want rather than having to get almost 300 kills to potentially unlock the exact scope that you want. I remember that was one of my gripes in BF4. I would always be trying to get the Cobra sight for my weapons and that sometimes ended up being one of the last unlocks I would get and it was so aggravating and like God I need 300 kills just to get the sight that I like. So no longer is that the case. You can start modifying the weapons exactly the way you would like right off the bat. This is basically going to allow you to be a little bit more strategic with how you spend your money in game. It'll also make loadout videos a little bit more valuable uh, just in case you're wondering how to outfit your weapons rather than spending your cash on attachments that don't work. You can either watch a loadout video or look up the stats on SimThick and figure out, okay, this attachment's probably going to complement this weapon the best. Now in case you're wondering, the Scar H is actually designated as a battle rifle in Battlefield Hardline and there's four battle rifles available to the Enforcer class. We have the Scar H, the H car, the SA-58 OSW, and the HK-51. What's cool about these guns is that they actually have faster reloads than the majority of the assault rifles out there. So they're trying to balance out these guns differently than the assault rifles. Assault rifles generally have two plus second reload times. The Scar H has a 1.9 second reload time, which potentially makes it better 
for a close quarter weapon. I don't know if I would agree with that based on the stats of it, but uh, the fast reload is certainly a welcome change, and it does make you have to think like, do I really want to use an assault rifle, or are these battle rifles a better option? One thing I will say though is that the Scar H has certainly got its competition in the battle rifle department. The SA-58 OSW looks like a real beast of a gun, so if you're debating about what kind of battle rifle to focus on for the Enforcer class, I would say either the Scar H or the SA-58 OSW. Those are going to be my two top picks at the moment. Now something that I was also playing around with when modifying this loadout is putting a riot shield on my back. I didn't use it at all in the gameplay in terms of trying to block fire with it on my front. I just kept it on my back the whole time and when players would sneak up behind me they'd actually have to aim kind of strategically to get a hit on me. Sometimes it would give me the second or two that I needed to whip around and shoot the person behind me and win that firefight. As for racking up some kills with this weapon I'm testing out all the new maps on Team Deathmatch. Some of them work incredibly well, some of them work incredibly poorly. I have had confirmation from the developers that they're aware of the poor spawning system in Team Deathmatch on some maps and that they're working to try and fix this situation. And you'll notice it too if you get into any of the TDM servers, you'll spawn in right behind some enemies, shoot them in the back, take 10 steps forward and somebody will spawn behind you and shoot you in the back. It's kind of ridiculous, not very strategic overall, just kind of pure chaos really. Anyway, the Scar H is a cool gun once modified correctly. The compensator is the most important attachment again, and I would actually recommend that attachment for all battle rifles in the game. So just get that compensator as soon as you possibly can. That pretty much wraps it up for this episode of Loadout. Don't forget to leave your comments for next week's episode. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.